Ready? A very good morning to you and thanks for tuning in. This is Beyond Governance at 101.9 High FM. My name is Nimra Pendele. Um, I hope you are you know, being productive while bracing the chill weather uh, while you're at home or at your offices or en route to the offices for some of people, of course. Um, if you're a student, I wish you nothing but the best for your media exams. You know, we all have kids and, and who are in secondary schools. And we all know that in their mind or their minds are rather riddled with apprehensions uh, towards exams. And I always say to my kids uh, for that matter, you know, there's no substitute for hard work. Hard work always paid. Uh, we know that winter is certainly upon us. It is freezing, especially in the morning and late at night. Once again, I am appealing to you, the beloved listener of the show, to spare a moment and reach out for the needy. Let's make a difference in someone's life by donating food parcels clothes and blankets, these items are certainly needed and will, will make a difference in the life of somebody who is in desperate need. Last month, we celebrated the Africa Month amidst escalation of food and, and food and fuel cost. Um, uh, thanks to the mayhem in the Ukraine, we all know that a huge increase in price and price of fuel uh, and crippling load shedding will further destroy the country struggling in the economy. Uh, this will also uh, make sure that whatever you know gains that we have managed to claw back uh, dissipate. We know that, or well, most of us have witnessed that the shrinking of our daily bus food basket, uh, which in my view will hit the poorest uh, in the main. In this country, the statistics suggest that we've got about 31% of South Africans who rely on social grants, and additionally, there's um, approximately about 10 million South Africans who depends on mostly on the 350 uh, special COVID grants. This brings to number of South Africans who rely on one grant on another to almost about 47%. This means almost 50% of South Africans depend on social grants. Clearly, this is, also, this is obviously not sustainable and something drastically needs to happen. Um, but once again, we, want, we welcome government's intervention in ameliorating the escalating uh, prices of petrol. However, we do need a deeper thinking and reflection on what would be the longer term solutions, um, as these interventions clearly are, are meant to be temporarily. It is on this basis that we continue to bring you the beloved listener a thought provoking and insightful conversations with captains of industry and thought leaders as they often share with us practical and scalable business solutions. And I don't think uh, any of the South Africans who are the beneficiaries of, of these grants wants to be a charity case, especially when opportunities are in abundance, but locked or inaccessible to the majority. This is treasures in my view. Anyway, moving along, if you miss any of our previous show, not to worry, simply visit our website, which is www.highfm.com and look for Beyond Governance and download those podcasts and share with your views with us via our SMS line, Telegram or Twitter handle. SMS line is 34519, the, the Telegram is 061-895-1095. And of course, my Twitter handle is at Bell Nimrod. As we kick off the show, it is appropriate that we thank Busi, who is a technical producer of the show, um, for he is able to manage uh, the gremlins, which unfortunately uh, cropped up this morning. Um, however, when you when the show up, uh, those gremlins would have been sorted would have been sorted out. In today's conversation, I'm joined by Sen Monto, who is a foreign service officer at the Department of International Relations. And he's also a serial author of books such as Tears in My Hands, Under the Sun, Under the, um, uh, Under the Shade of Wisdom. We are also joined by Sol Malobi, who's also an author and executive uh, at the Brand Hill Africa. In our conversation this glorious morning, we are unpacking opportunities um, that lies for um, pub authors or public authors in a very com competitive uh, publish publishing industry. Without any waste of time, let me take this opportunity to, to, to welcome Stan as well as uh, Sol Malobi. Gentlemen, good evening and welcome. Um, well, thank you so much um, and um, you know, greetings to the, the audience and greetings to everybody 
we're looking forward to a great conversation that will be able to build our nation. Uh, good morning uh, to, to you, uh, Dr. Mbele. Good morning, Stan, and good morning to the listeners of High FM. Well done. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, as we proceed without a waste of time, let me start with Stan. Um, as as a, an established author yourself, can you give us a broad stroke uh, landscape of the publishing industry in this country? How does it look like from where you're sitting? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mbele. The, 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 the publishing industry in this country um, has got its own hurdles. Um, and I think that emanates from the fact that when we uh, try to use the mainstream uh, publishers, the public, it, it, it's, it's a bit um, uh, problematic in terms of the cost that is related um, to that. Um, so most of uh, writers uh, are there, you know, across the breadth and uh, the breadth uh, of, of our country, but then the limitation is uh, it has to always uh, be 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 the funding. But then in addition to that, um, the, the the other limitation also has to do with the intellectual property of uh, you know the products uh, from the writer point of view that um, you produce. Uh, um, your, your stories, but then they end up in the hands of the publishers because of the rights um, that has to be taken away because you do not have uh, money. But then in recent times, um, we have seen the emergence of uh, self-publishing. Now self-publishing, I think most people have taken a hit to it, including myself. I've self-published most of my books. But then I think I've done so having taught myself specifically how to do that, how to edit and all so. And I think likely so, uh, I was a speechwriter, but then also likely so, I am a communicator. So I think the, 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 the both um, you know, skills that help me to be able to carry on with that. But that does not necessarily solve the problem that you are, or the question that you asked to say. How is the, the landscape? The landscape, it is still has its own limitation. And then also the distribution of the, the books that we get is also a problem in terms of the, the benefits that we get uh, from it. The mainstream um, um, bookshops, they take, they still take a huge percentages of our of our of our benefits. And, and, and we gain, um, we gain, yes, popularity, we gain, uh, but we do not gain any, any, any benefit of uh, funds from, 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 public, from publishing. What we should uh, do without us looking to government all the time to say, help us, help us. I think we need the, the laws and regulations that will help us to maintain, most importantly, our intellectual property but then also uh, being able to fund, uh, especially young people that are able to tell the, the stories of our country the way it is. And I think we should encourage this because most of the books were written uh, passively and then some of the information that was there was not necessarily the true reflection of us, especially the, the black community. So we should encourage writing of uh, black stories, of African stories, but because there is a need for funding, at least the seed fund is required uh, to ensure that uh, up and coming writers are given an opportunity to tell their stories the way it is, the way it's supposed to be, not to be changed by those who have uh, money. Because in most cases, people who have money have a tendency to change the narrative of the stories that are told by up and coming uh, writers. So I think in a nutshell, that is how it is looking, but we are hopeful that in the near future, uh, we will be able to, uh, to change through the discussions such as the one that we are having uh, today. Thank you very much for that insight, Stan. Quite uh, thought-provoking indeed. Let me welcome uh, Brasol. So what you take on the initial anecdote shared by Stan in as far as the landscape of publishing industry? Um, let me start by being naughty. Um, 
by saying that we are not self-publishers. I think um, we are positioning ourselves as independent publishers. Um, for instance, you have Stan who, who runs a publishing company called Stan Monso Publishers. Um, uh, I'm saying this because every day I, since I joined Brand Hill Africa on full-time basis, people will tell me that, uh, Brasol, are you self-employed? I would say, no, I'm not self-employed. I'm employed by Brand Hill Africa. It's a corporate entity. It's, it's a juristic entity. Therefore, I'm, I'm an employee of, of this company. But for me, it is also very important because um, when we talk about independent publishing, it means we are moving away from your establishment and the challenges, um, uh, Stan has already alluded to them. But perhaps let me take a step back and say, uh, globally, the, the outbreak of COVID-19 has catapulted us into, into consuming uh, digital media platforms. And the statistics uh, which have been released by Simon Kemp uh, are very telling. Basically, he says in the last 12 months uh, with the advent of COVID-19, every day internet penetration was gaining over 900 people, uh, which means then that as we are speaking today and the number is continuing, we are looking at 4.7 billion people across the world who are connected to, 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 to internet. But then he also says something very, very interesting that in, in the last 10 years, consumption of media has, has evolved uh, or it, it has transformed if you are to use a contemporary uh, concept that many people are buying into. It's, it, it says that um, consumption of media uh, through mobile uh, digital platforms has increased by over 460%. Um, and meaning that um, on desktop, um, the number has increased by, by 26%, but there were losers. Your traditional TV um, uh, media consumption has decreased by 24%. Uh, radio uh, access through your traditional uh, radio device has also gone down by 19%. But this doesn't mean that um, the listenership has gone down. It simply means that people are now accessing radio through mobile um, uh, uh, digital uh, devices. Magazines have lost by 50% and people will remember that even uh, uh, Media24 had to close down a number of, 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 of publications. So all in all, people are reading, but the, the challenge is they are no longer reading uh, through your traditional platforms like your, your books, your, 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 your print media, and, and, and uh, listening to your traditional radio or, or TV. People do consume news. Now, this is a very important um, uh, development for us as independent publishers. And, and I always say to people, if we are independent publishers, we stand the chance of doing what your traditional establishment isn't doing. And we also have to taste the kind of risks that your commercial establishment may not take under normal circumstances. That's why we then have to talk about multimedia books, where if I read a book, I'm able to click on it and it takes me to, to an internet 
where I'll be able to read more about, about, about the subject that I'm reading. Or if I'm talking about a profile of a musician, I should be able to click or to be given um, uh, a website so that that takes me to stream, streaming services. Then I'll be able to listen to the music of that particular of that particular artist. So oh, on the, on the, opportunities on the, on the are very interesting uh, and development completely. are very interesting for us as so independent uh, on that On that very uh, punchy note, let's quickly take a break and we'll come back just in a second. Uh, welcome back. If you just join us, we are just started a very interesting conversation with Stan Monta, who's uh, um, an independent publisher, as well as uh, Sol Molobi. He's in the same um, category as well. Um, before we went to that break, all colleagues were giving us very interesting insight about the, the making world of publishing. Uh, for an example, Stan made reference to issues of cost, intellectual property, uh, and the entire ecosystem of the publish, publishing industry, which still needs to be overcome. He also made mention of um, the need for government to regulate uh, some of the policies, to regulate or come about the policies that would strengthen or empower the, the independent publishers, as it were. Saul also came through by just having a bit of a twist in saying that these are necessarily um, you know, self-publishers, but the corrected narrative should be independent publishers, which obviously it marks a, a shift away from your traditional publishing houses um, to more new ones. And, and you know, so also give us very interesting statistical background in terms of how overall media has sort of dwindled uh, in favor of um, electronic media. Um, television productions, I mean, television magazines, uh, as well as your traditional newspapers have suddenly declined. So this is a broad context. But coming back to the issue at hand, um, which I want uh, Stan to come up, back, to come back with, because um, clearly there are gatekeepers, in my view, in the publishing industry. And, and how do we navigate this, these uh, gatekeeper stand, if you like. I mean, intellectual property is one big item that you have um, uh, put to us. The other big one is distrib distribution of books. The other big one you, you raised to us or you've shared with us is the huge percentages that is been siphoned by the publishing houses. This in, this, in my view, constitute some of the gatekeepers. But how do you navigate this uh, very complex web of ecosystem? Stand. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Again, uh, it, it is very difficult, but I think at some at some time it has to be done. Um, so I think what needs to be done is, and I think uh, Russell was right to say, um, um, most of the things now are digital, and I think you can immediately send your book, for example, to Amazon and it can be um, published there. Um, uh, I think this uh, coupled with that. The, the the data prices so now so, so now we've we've got means now to be able to transmit our work um, to any country at, at a given minute um, um, but then then they, we have to then say what is what is the limitation on the point of view of the end user being the the reader um, so that the systems then are, are smooth um, from the point of view of uh, the producer and the, and the end user so, so in our country, I think it's, it's given that, yes, you can access the books um, at any point in time, um, but then I think we, we still need to work on the issue of the, of the data prices so that it can go down, so that then, you know, we can then start to consume more of that. And then other things I think are related to the, to the system. For you, for example, to distribute books, 
you need to have storages across the country, or you have to be linked with uh, um, organizations. It could be take a lot and other people who have storages across the country, so that if your book is, is required in Rustenburg or Zanin, then it can easily then uh, be able to go there. So I think then it will then be uh, in terms of then, if you look at the money that is there. So it's, it's always almost about um, the funding and the resources. Uh, that are there. So for you to start to, to, to publish and print the book, a book is around, let's say 80 rand to 100 rand per, per copy, depending on the, on the nature of the book. And then you have to take it to a, a distributor that will have their own card and then the transportation of that book to different and the storage prices. So it is, it, is, it, is, it is going to be a little bit um, um, difficult to navigate but I think it will work when we start to come together as independent uh, publishers to say, um, now that we have uh, means and now that we have um, 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 some kind of a society of publishers that we have set together, then how do we work around this now hurdles of ensuring that when a book is required, wherever it is required, then us as independent publisher, then we can be able to send it um, there. Um, as individuals, it, it will be difficult. We need to unite as independent publishers um, because uh, unfortunately, the prices that are related to storage, distribution and other things are not, not easy. And then we can then make a deal as a unified um, um, organ organization with the take lots and them and say, even if at times we may come to want to do this at a credit agreement or anything like that, then, then, then I think that is the process that we can be able to work. And then we can then build ourselves slowly. And then later then when we establish, then maybe we can then start to buy storages and, and buy you know, certain resources that will help us uh, to be able to even go beyond our borders because we've got a lot of African um, nations uh, and, and other nations that are willing, that are eager to, to, to come on board, but then there's an issue of uh, custom taxes and other things. So I think if we establish ourselves first, um, and I think uh, Rasol and I, I think we're going to start that because I think um, there's, 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 there's a difference between let, let us look into starting and starting. So we're going to challenge ourselves, me and Brasol, and say we're going to start this, 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 this unity of independent publishers. And then that will also be able to take us um, across the continent. And I think for us, I think it's going to be easy because I think we worked in diplomacy and, and, and I think we should be able to do this. There's young people that are eager in South and Sudan um, that want to publish, that want to distribute their material. But I think um, the, the linear of the things that I've just put on the table um, continue to be limitation. And at some point, I think we are willing and I think we're going to overcome um, with some of the suggestions that I've just put on the table. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that insight. Um, you raised two pertinent issues. Um, firstly, is the South African market and international market or the continental market. When you're talking book sales, as an example, um, which you've given us a unit cost, from 80 rands, 100 rands, which adds up to about two, 300 rands, give, you know, given the value chain of other you know, uh, players in the market. But let's take a step back and ask ourselves a question. Perhaps maybe we can shed light with, with regards with, on this issue. What is the reading? What is, is there a culture of reading among South Africans? Because you, if there is sufficient culture of reading, the consumption is likely to go and be high. Isn't there a correlation between low? Of, pack, let's pack the cost. We, cost is an issue, but what about the what about the reading culture in South Africa? Um, can can maybe Brasol give us a light in there because we we are hearing a lot of debates and issues around the extent to which South Africans are, aren't necessarily a reading nation. So it's almost counterproductive to promote books and interventions when the majority of us, at least in the, in the market, aren't reading. Russell, can you share light with me in that, in that perspective, please? Yeah, there, there are two concepts that we normally talk about. It's, it's literacy, uh, meaning the ability to, to read and write, 
uh, literacy is very low in South Africa. And the reason uh, could be attributed to the crisis our education um, is in. For instance, um, the National Planning Commission has indicated that um, in, their, in their review of education in 2018, they found that between grade one and grade 12, there's a 40% uh, dropout rate. This, this means um, we, are, we are in crisis and therefore it impacts on, on our literacy skills. Uh, we, we also know that um, South Africa is scoring very poorly on literacy and, and numeracy competitions um, uh, globally. So this is the challenge you are, we are facing. But there's another concept that we should be looking at. It's called literacy, meaning people who can read and write, but they're just reluctant to read. And yes, especially with my generation, we can attribute this to the legacy of Bantu education, where we were taught to, to read, not for pleasure, but for exams or for tests, meaning for academic purposes. So for that reason, then, uh, then you find that um, people don't buy books for leisure. Therefore, people don't read books for leisure, uh, which creates a, a crisis uh, for the book market. That's why when you look at the South African uh, commercial publishing industry, they are basically in educational um, uh, publishing because then they know that they are able to sell the books to, to the Department of, of Education or to universities. And our specialty as independent publisher is to develop a trade market, uh, people buying our books for leisure, for fun. But I would say those of us who have children, um, the minute you start reading and your children can see you every day reading, uh, they will be able to learn from you and they should be able uh, to imbibe this culture of, of reading. And, and for me, this is promising because we are, most of us are now actively involved in the education of our children. We also help them with, we, we, with homework, we are more involved than our parents. But I also want to talk about one thing that um, Stan has, has raised. There's no publishing without an author. And unfortunately, if you look at the, the, the commercial um, establishment, publishing establishment, not only in South Africa, but internationally, uh, authors are highly disempowered by the system. Uh, if I give you an example, uh, the, the, the universal uh, um, um, royalty percentage rate is 7%, uh, which is normally offered to the author. Um, it goes to up to 12 to 15% for textbook writers, because usually a textbook is written by, by sometimes even three to five authors. Therefore, then they share the 12%, uh, which is allocated to them as royalty percentage. This is a crisis um, which translates in us not having full-time writers um, in South Africa. One, because uh, the book sales are poor, but also that uh, the, the royalty percentage offered to our authors um, is very, very low. Therefore, the, it, it can sustain their livelihoods. And this is very sad because then you have a bookseller taking 30% as, as their commission. So they benefit more than the author who produced this work. And therefore, which means that if the author gets 7%, the bookshop gets a 30%, then your commercial publisher will keep 63%. So you have booksellers and publishers making money and profit out of the labor of a writer who can make a living out of their knowledge production. And this is where independent public 
publishers come in to say, we need to, to transform uh, this sector where we give various options to authors to say, you may also come in not just as a writer in a, a royalty percentage, but you are also coming in as a core investor in this project so that you are able to, to make money out of the, the, the product of your, 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 your mm -hmm. talent. Yeah, so this is where we are coming in as independent publishers uh, to transform the, the, the publishing industry so that everyone in the value chain is able to benefit. Um, the other thing is that we also avoid uh, using your, your mainstream booksellers. Thanks to, to, to companies, uh, I'm sorry, I'll just mention them, your PostNet, you have your garages, you have your pick and pay and pep, who have now gone into, into distribution, which means then that um, we are able to use social media to promote our books and people order them. And then from there, we also add uh, to, the, to the price of the book, we also add the cost of distribution. So we are circumventing uh, your publishing, uh, your, your bookseller um, charging us a 30% commission and people are able to get their books through this new distribution outlets that we, we, we are now utilizing. But as independent publishers, our responsibility is to our authors to say, as cultural workers, they need to make a livelihood out of their, their, their knowledge production. Whereas with your normal commercial establishment, they're just interested in, in, in uh, making their pockets big uh, at the expense of, of the writers. So then we also need to get our people to start buying books for pleasure. Uh, I remember in 1996, 1997, uh, the, the UK launched what they called new audiences uh, program, where they were getting people into theaters, where they were getting people to buy books and, and media products, so that when they are traveling uh, they are uh, and using public transport, they are able to, to read. And that's why today, if you go to Europe, uh, when you go into a train or a bus, you'll find people reading. Therefore, uh, that, that is a boost to, to the publishing industry. And this is the culture that we need to establish here at home. And it's a pity that the South African Book Development Council had to close down uh, two, two years ago because government didn't, didn't support them. And they were very important in trying to create a culture of reading and a culture of book buying in this country. Well, on that note, we're gonna quickly take a break. We'll come back just in a second. Welcome back. Uh, this is um, Beyond Governments. I'm joined by Stan Monzo, who's a foreign uh, service officer at the Department of International Relations as well as a serial author. And I'm also joined by Sol Molobi, who's, who's an executive at Brand New Africa. He's also a well-established publisher. Before we went to the break, Sol gave us a very interesting statistics, which works against the independent publishers. Independent publishers in this context means a small man who wants to move away from the grain by, you know, uh, taking ownership of his uh, uh, intellectual property from start to finish. One of the issues that Saul brought to our attention is the fact that the booksellers take a commission of about 30% and the authors are getting from seven to 12%. And, and this is clearly a, a big challenge for those that would want to make a, a ends meet by selling the, the, these, these kinds of books, whether it's in leisure, education, politics, you name it. They all are stuck against the authors, clearly, based on what Saul has given uh, 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 to us. 
So which means we, you know, the, the, this idea of independent commission or independent publishers really needs to take momentum, given the fact that the COVID-19 has also taught us that the print media has obviously dwindled. So everything is electronic. Surely there are ways and means which the colleagues have already shared with us that they need to pursue those. Let me just bring back uh, Stan here, um, which is an issue that you also raised. Moving forward, what would be your ideal scenario um, to any would be publisher, independent publisher, listen to the show now, what would you consider as the best way out? Thank you, Doctor. I think the best way out is to, um, firstly, I think to promote the culture of reading in our country. Um, so I think we need to also look into, you know, the, the kind of language that we produce. We need to not uh, um, be too difficult uh, for people to read. I think uh, one, other, one thing that I've seen is a limitation that may contribute to uh, people not reading is sometimes we write a very expensive English, where people have to translate in their mind the understanding of what we, we, we. So I think we need to start with, uh, you know, transmitting the message in a very, very um, simple way. And then I think once we have done that, then I think we would have created interest on the part of the end user to be able to consume the material that we produce. Um, we need to get into, or to organize ourselves, like I said, to unify ourselves so that we share ideas that are going to help us. Um, I, I'm sure Bristol will have ideas in terms of, uh, um, you know, distribution uh, that he will be able to share with me. And then I will have also uh, other ideas. And I think when we start to share ideas and I think we'll be able to, uh, to work together. We welcome, um, uh, you know, ideas from new um, uh, uh, publishers and, 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 and they must come because um, this is in a way of correcting some of the narratives that was misrepresented in the, in the, in the past. We also, I think, uh, encourage that, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, other people simply read a lot because they're consuming uh, products that are produced in their language and they're reading it in their language. So, so, so the African um, content, um, uh, it needs to be, it needs to be promoted. And I think that this is deliberate, especially on the part of our children, that we need to preserve some kind of cultural language um, through the work that we do. Yes, we want to uh, relay a message at times uh, through English that is all encompassing and is a medium that is understood by, by many people in South Africa and beyond the borders. But I think deliberately when we have that opportunity, we have to then say, what are we doing with our own uh, languages? What are we all doing with our own cultures? What are we doing with our own identity? And I think in, 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 in preserving our identity, we encourage um, our readers, up and coming readers to be able to write in the languages that we understand uh, the most, but then also taking the message to the world as well. Um, so I think that is what we're looking forward to uh, um, going forward. Unity, um, organization, uh, working together, but then being able to be accessible. We're looking at, that's what I was saying, me and we're, so we're going to challenge ourselves to be accessible to the young writers so that when they come through, then we can be able to provide the guidance and the assistance that is there. Yes, government and other people need to come through but I think it can start with us uh, right now, uh, the people that are on this platform to be able to assist and make that necessary change. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. That's a very interesting observation from your end, Stan. Uh, I just wanna, uh, you know, get so to come through here and give us a sense of what, you know, what are the elements that the independent publishers need to look at and embrace based from the established uh, publishers. Because there's some positive energies, positive um, systems, processes, ideas from the, from the, from the established uh, publishers. What, what could those be? Because when you wanna build, you have to build based on knowledge. You build based on what, what is already existing out there. 
could you just share with us so in your in your in your thinking what could be those the the mistake um that that authors make and independent publishers make um is that they don't invest sufficient resources into developing sales and marketing capacity. And, and I, I do say to, to authors, why spend three to even 10 years working on this book, uh, which is a product, and yet you don't ensure that by the time it gets published, um, one, uh, the market will be ready for it, uh, ready for it in the sense that they'll be able to, to buy it. So profitability beyond just sustainability is key. Never, never uh, publish a book if you are not so sure about the market. And you can only be sure of the market if you have invested sufficient resources to to market that book. Uh, I have seen very bad uh, products in the market uh, doing very, very well, simply because they are properly uh, marketed. And I've also seen uh, bad products, and I'm not just talking about uh, publishing products, uh, even consumer, general consumer uh, products, uh, which are extremely good, but because they are under marketed, they are not doing very, very well um, in the market. So my, my advice to any author is that when you give your manuscript to, to, to a publisher, whether commercial or independent, make sure that uh, before they publish, already they've shared with you their sales and marketing strategy so that you can have comfort that um, that, that book is going to, to penetrate the market. And by the way, um, it's a brand. We need to, to, to brand our products, whether it's, 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 it's a novel or it's, it's poetry or just like music or any other consumer product. We, we need to brand them so that um, they, they appear to be palatable to the consumers. We need to convince our consumers that yes, the, the money that you have as your, as your disposable income, uh, please instead of spending it on that product, uh, please spend it on my book because it will be worth it. So where authors just publish for the sake of publishing or independent publishers publish for the sake of publishing, then it's not sustainable. And as such, that's why we'll always have problems where we, we will have our cultural workers uh, 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 becoming destitute. And, and, and unfortunately then, you have a situation where that cultural worker has passed on, then we will then blame government for not supporting uh, cultural workers. But the truth is that um, the support should primarily come from the consumers and consumers will only buy a product if that product is properly marketed by, by the publisher uh, in the case of, of, of book publishing. So, Please, as independent publishers, let invest resources into, into marketing and selling um, our books, not only for our sake as publishers, but also for the sake of the livelihood of our authors, because they need to make a living from their, their knowledge production. So this is very, very key. And I've seen many independent publishers um, coming short on, on this one. Well, that's, that's quite thought provoking and insightful in so many ways. Let me bring Stan as we gravitate towards the end. What, what, do you take, what are your take, take points or issues that you want to elevate based on what Sol has said? 
No, definitely. I think just to re-echo what was all said, I think uh, the packaging is very important. Um, the, the, the kind of uh, information that you put through your product is very important. Market research is also very important. Um, um, access, um, having access through networking, we ensuring that um, you consult with people that are, you know, have been tested. Uh, it is very important. Again, I, I want to emphasize this one, organizing. Um, um, because with organizing, then we are going to be able to get different viewpoints, different ideas that is going to, to be able to build our product to be uh, world class. I think that is also um, very important. I want to also re echo what the uh, source said. Let's not do things for the sake of um, doing things. Yes, it is important that all of us have got a different message and we have to relay that message. But then let's not uh, take our, our consumers for granted. That little money that they could use for bread, then if we say to them, buy my product, that we know that is not necessarily worth it, um, that, that becomes unfair. So let us make an effort and, and a dedicated effort in ensuring that if we say to them, make a choice and buy my product and do not buy bread for your own children, then it's, it's, it's indeed um, uh, uh, you know, uh, informed and it's indeed something that is going to be beneficial to that particular uh, consumer. So I think uh, it's very emphasis to say, let us take our consumers very seriously. And when we do so, they will have no choice but to support our products and they're going to build this market that we have been talking about. And, uh, and, and I think that is the way to go. And I think we have to also take time to ask them, consumer, what is it that you want? So that we respond positively to something that we know people want than assuming that they are wanting it. So I think that is my message uh, today going forward. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Stan, for uh, that insight. Uh, great stuff indeed. Um, Rasol, we are literally left with two minutes. Uh, your your parting shot on this on this very important issue. I, I would say let's learn from I'll mention the product Coke. Um, uh, Coca Cola literally killed um, Pepsi in 1996, 1997. But up until today, they continue to advertise themselves every day, even though technically they don't have any beverage that competes with them. So we also need to do the same thing. Let's promote our brands, let's promote our products and, and services every second of our existence, because this is how we'll be able to capture the market out there. Thank you very much uh, for your insight, uh, Stan. Much appreciated. And so much appreciated. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much, and thank you to the listeners. You're most welcome. There we, we that's a very interesting conversation we just had with Sam Stan Monzo, who is a foreign service officer at the Department of International Relations. Um, he's also a serial author of many books, which include but not limited to Tears in My Hands Under the Shade of Wisdom. Saul is equally, um, you know, to the task as in he's also an acclaimed author and, and, and as also as the executive um, at the Brand Hill Africa. We were unpacking the ecosystem of the publishing fraternity. Colleagues have been able to share with us interesting insights on how to navigate a uh, very turbulent water, if you like, of the established environment. We have noted a very disturbing statistics, which goes against the grain. The authors are in our, based on the co co comments echoed by colleagues, clearly authors uh, of cultural artifact or cultural uh, intelligentsia, to look of a better word, have been disempowered given the fact that the bulk of the money goes to uh, booksellers, goes to distributors, and very little comes to them. So for them to become successful, from an from, from artistic point of view, there's a point, there's need for them to um, spend as much time in marketing the product. Um, Saul was quite pointing that if you, you already have a, pro a product that is upcoming, 
you have to spend as much time and resources marketing that particular product. Stan was also quite on point by saying, you have to give value. The consumers, people that buy your product have to have value. You, you have to demonstrate value. They don't want to just buy your book because they like you. They got to buy your book because they believe in the messaging, the content, which is uplifting to them. Unfortunately, we're going to leave it here. It has been absolutely beautiful having the conversation with these two gentlemen. Let's do this again shortly. Shalom.